We have this very interesting piece that comes from Christina Radish's interview, our own Christina Radish's interview, with Laura Shuler Donner. Now, uh, Miss Donner has been a producer forever in the world of movies, and she goes all the way back to the beginning with the X-Men films, as does her protege, Kevin Feige. She was talking recently about how the X-Men movies have the Dark Phoenix, they have New Mutants, and then who knows where Disney's going to take it. But from this interview, it seems like it is now clearly in Disney's hands as to what to do with the X-Men. Now, Donner points pointed out that she thinks that there's a lot of good stories to tell for movies like Cable, X-Force, and obviously the X-Men films we already have, but what is Disney going to do with them? Are they going to scrap it entirely? Are they going to try to evolve what we already have into some form, or are they just not going to worry about the X-Men, or Fantastic Four, or Deadpool, or Wolverine, or any of these things? So I tossed it to my two experts here. Coy, I know how much you love comic book movies. I know how excited you get. Hell, you sweat like the greatest of all the sweaties, Mr. John Schnapp, to go into a movie theater and watch a comic book movie. So what is your panic level today on the heels of this Donner quote, on the heels of Bob Iger's interview? Where are X-Men movies going? I think this is the best thing to happen to X-Men since X2. I think that Brian Singer made a bunch of very good mutant movies. I think we've yet to have a really good X-Men movie, and I think that's to come. I think we've seen a lot of adaptations, but never a literal translation. I think that where we are in society now with the culture of comic book films, we need a fresh start. We need things to start over, and I think the best way to do that is Kevin Feige plays the long game. X-Men are a very serious serialized character set. So you go Harry Potter, you build them up from the ground up, you have a core team of five or seven, you invest in all these characters we actually care about, and you actually get a real Cyclops, a real Storm, a real Gene. You give us the characters we loved as, as children, and then you actually play to the themes the comics are meant to, about racism, about homophobia, about all the things that are so important today. Like, the X-Men have never been more important. Every time, every ten years we think we've covered this, and then it's like, oh no, wait, we're still struggling with that very thing they identified in the 60s. So right now is an amazing time because we can retell what the X-Men are meant to be, we do a fresh start, and we have a long-form storytelling with the medium that Kevin Feige does so well. Yeah, so Jeff, does it seem to you like Dark Phoenix, which is the movie that's coming out in June, or at least it, right now it's slated to come out in June, New Mutants on its heels in August, are these just dead movies walking and we're going to forget about them or the cast as soon as they come out? I mean, I don't know if they're dead movies walking because, I don't know, they could be good. Maybe New Mutants turned out good. I don't know. I know nobody wants to believe that. Uh, and maybe New Mutants doesn't get a theatrical release and the, and the rumors about it going to Hulu or Disney Plus later in the year turn out to be true. I don't have any inside information, uh, you know, one way or the other. I think that... They're dead. They're, they're dead movies in the sense that, yeah, you, once they get to one, uh, once Marvel gets its hands on the X Men, it's blowing. They're, they're blowing it all up. This cast is gone. This cast is ready to be gone, anyways. Like we, we, we I've seen enough of of McAvoy at this point as Professor X and and whatnot. Uh, I, I think that Coy is exactly right that, that they need to start with five to seven characters. You know, uh, do that movie first and then expand it. The same the same way they did with the Avengers. That was that started out as five people in the first Avengers, and now there's 65 characters in, in Endgame or whatever. Uh, so I think that 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 Kevin should follow his own playbook and just reinvent the wheel. And, and but you got to get them out out of Simon Kinberg's hands and, and even Lauren Schuler Donner. It was one of the things that Lauren Schuler Donner hit on multiple times during that interview when she was talking with Christina is that this is Kevin Feige's show now for the most part. And she did mention her and Feige have a good relationship. She was his mentor. But now that Kevin Feige is in control, let's talk about the evolution of X-Men and how best to approach it. Who's the first cog in that machine? Do you borrow somebody like a Deadpool who's a member of X-Force but also jokes around with the X-Men? Or is there one casting announcement of an X-Man, of an X-Person going forward that needs to happen, and then that is going to start the evolution. Is it a Professor X? Is it a Wolverine? Is it a Jean Grey? Who is it, Coy? I, honestly, I think it's Cyclops and Jean Grey. I'd focus on the youth. I'd focus on the love story between the two of them and make that your core. I'd, I wouldn't. Uh, we're kind of done with this Wolverine and the X Men, and that's what those Brian Singer movies were. We had a Wolverine plus team, and I think that announcing a Wolverine would be a misstep because we still love Hugh Jackman. We just had Wolverine and the X Men. I think you start with a core five or seven, and then in the second movie you introduce that new team when they're trapped on an island, like a mutant island or something. Like you keep a Wolverine waiting in the wings for a little bit, he, and you tease the audience. He's a button, with that. or he's the second movie. He's not the first, and he's not the major announcement because we're going to feel like it's the same mistakes being made all over again and we're not going to feel like that's our Harry Potter, that's our reinvention, that's our core team. 
for one, he should be older than the rest of the X-Men. That, that should be a benchmark you start from there. I think these kids need to be kids. So is the utilization of Wolverine going forward, you think, kind of like how the MCU right now utilizes Hulk, where not necessarily fodder for your own movie, but comes in and steals the show at points in other films? Unless he's Daphne Keene, unless it's X-23. I think X-23, if you want to have a young, current Wolverine, you make it her. You have X-23, you have the legacy of Hugh Jackman's Wolverine, not in name, but like in concept, and you can blend her in because she's the right age for it. But I think that that if you use Wolverine, it needs to be someone that tears through a scene and that isn't the main core part of the movie. So the evolution of the X-Men is one thing, Jeff, but it's also how do you introduce them in films? Do you just announce that there's going to be a standalone X-Men movie that's a reboot, or is there a way to more organically incorporate it into this larger universe you want? Basically what I'm asking is, are the X-Men going to start in the MCU right away, or are we going to have a sort of a standalone movie, a lot like what Marvel did with their Netflix shows, where, hey, okay, that stuff happens, but we're not going to talk about that stuff. We're just going to have it as a headline on a wall somewhere. So do you just have an X-Men movie or do you throw them right into the Vitamix with the MCU? I think you just have an X-Men movie. In fact, I think the X-Men are the MCU going forward. Like, I don't know what happens to the Avengers after Endgame. Yeah, we're, we're not really sure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I, don't, I don't know if you're going to have Captain America and Iron Man. I think that the, the X-Men are your new Avengers.